Okay, so in this class, we are quickly going to look at how to get our user profile information, things like our email address, our phone number, and our full name, all right? So we need to create an event listener that will take a snapshot of this data node in our database, all right? So in the end, we want to retrieve our email address, our full name, and our phone number, all right? So let's go back to the app. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new event listener, all right? And this, we're going to call it a user profile event listener, all right? So I'm going to make it an anonymous class, right? So I need to create a new class for that. So I'm going to call this user profile event listener, okay? So I'm going to add this. Bam. So I'll change the access modifier to public. So I need to inherit from Java Lang object. I'm gonna say Java dot lang dot object, and I'm gonna implement an interface. I value event listener. Okay. So I need to bring a reference of Firebase. Bam. So let's implement this interface. So this interface will always retrieve our database snapshot. So the data snapshot will retrieve our user information from us. Okay. So I'm going to delete this. Delete this. Okay. So I'm going to put an if statement. If snapshot dot value is not equal to null. Right. I'm going to say string full name email and phone all right so our full name will be equal to so before we go ahead and set the value of full name we need to check for no right so what I want to do is I want to check if this full name child is this first of all right so let's do that so I'm gonna say snapshot dot child bracket full name not equal to no right so this is actually a shorthand way of checking for no right so we add a conditional statement before you set your value All right so I'm gonna say snapshot dot child full name dot value dot to string okay so if so if the database snapshot of child full name is not equal to no we're gonna set this whereas it's equal to no so we're gonna set this as our full name right so this would be the default value of this statement all right so let's continue the next we need to do is for our email address we're going to say email equal to, I have to do the same thing, snapshot dot child email is not equal to no. Then we'll have snapshot dot child dot email dot value dot to string. Okay. In case you don't actually like this method, so we're gonna just use a regular method. We're gonna first of all check if snapshot the child phone is not equal to no should be a string. So this is exactly what we've been doing. So this statement is the shorthand of this, alright? So I'm gonna say phone is equal to snapshot dot child phone the value dot to string okay so this actually gets out our user information right our user profile information so to be on the safe side we need to save this to our local storage right so we need to save it to our shared preference okay 
So I'm going to need to define a new instance of shared preferences, all right? So I'm going to say, I shared preferences equal to preferences. I'm going to call this preferences, okay? This will be equal to application.contest dot get shared preferences I'm gonna call this user info that's where I want to save this information right file creation mode I'm gonna set this to private okay so for us to be able to write data to our shared preferences we need an I shared preferences editor okay so we're gonna define one right so we're gonna say I share preferences editor. I'm gonna call this editor, okay? So now let's assign values to our editor. So I'm gonna say editor dot string. So like I already explained earlier on in this particular course, the share preferences editor allow us to write values against a particular key all right so the key for this particular data would be full name so this key will help us to be able to retrieve our full name in future all right so i'm going to need to pass it the value and the value will be our full name okay so the next we need to do is for the email address i'm going to say string email this will be email so the next will be our phone number editor dot put string phone so after we're done setting up our values we need to call this method editor dot apply so this will actually save the data the data we've assigned to our editor to our shared preference all right so guys now we are done with this the next thing we need to do is to really create our event listener right so i'm going to create a new method this method i'm going to call it create so in this create method we are going to initialize our event listener all right so to do that i'm going to say firebase database equal to app data helper so as you guys can see our app data comes in handy in moments like this right so this will grab the instance of our database all right so we're going to say string user id we need to grab the instance of our user id as well so to do this i'm going to say app data helper dot get current user so this will return the instance of the current user and we're going to add dot uid so this will retrieve our user id so the next thing we to do is to define a new database reference reference we're going to call this proof profile reference and this will be equal to database dot get reference users okay slash plus user id right so we're actually going to somewhere like this okay so we're going to point to users and we're going to point to the user id of our currently signed in user okay so the net, the last thing we need to do we're going to say profile profile reference dot add value add value event listener okay so we're going to pass it this boom so that's that so the add value event listener will always be updating our information to our local storage so even if when the app is running and we make an edit to our name or our email address or phone number 
it will automatically update okay so before we are done here we need to first we need to instantiate our editor as well at this particular point so we're going to say editor will be equal to pref francis dot edit so this is how we initialize our editor so that it can actually take in data right and save it in this shared preference all right so guys that's all we need to do at this moment so now we need to head back to our our main activity and define an instance of user profile event listener okay i'm going to go to the top to the topmost all right i don't need this anymore okay call this firebase and i'm going to say user profile event listener so i'm going to call this profile event listener and this should be equal to new user profile event listener okay so on our on create method we're going to create this profile event listener so that it can start getting us our full name our information in general okay so we're going to come here and say profile listener dot create all right so it will start retrieving our information so guys to verify that this works just the way we planned it we're going to go to our profile event listener and put some breakpoints all right so that when the data returns we will be able to know if really it fetched us our our information so at this point we need to uninstall our app from our devices so that we can log in afresh in that way we'll always keep an instance of our current user that's the only way this will be able to work okay so guys let's head over to our emulator and Okay, so first of all, let's run our app and see what's going on. So let's run our app and verify that everything works just very well, okay? Okay, so our build is completing. Okay, don't know why this happened, but let's try and run the app again. So we got an error. So guys, what this means is we need to start from our login page. We need to log in so that we can get an instance of a current user, right? So I'm going to stop this. So we're going to open our splash screen, our splash screen activity. Okay, so from our splash screen, we're actually jumping into our main activity, but we don't want it to continue like this, okay? So we're going to clean this. We're going to save Firebase user. Let's grab an instance of a Firebase user. I'm gonna call this current user which will be equal to app data helper app data helper dot get current user okay so we need to check if this current user is logged in or not so we're gonna say if current user is equal to no so this means that user is not logged in so we need to log him in so we're going to say start activity type of 
login activity. So whereas the current user is not no, that means that user exists, we should go to our main activity. Sorry. Set activity type of main activity. All right. Okay, so let's run our app now. Boom. We've not seen this page for a very long time now. All right. So we're going to go ahead and log in. Okay. So I'm logging in this user. So this is the user I'm logging in. Okay. So I'm going to provide his password. We are supposed to provide a progress dialog. We'll do that eventually in the course. Boom. Okay. So our breakpoint has been activated. So we got a full name, Uchenna Nodim. We got an email address. Uchenna Nodim. We got an email address. And phone. We got our phone number. So this is how straightforward it is to grab information from our Firebase. And in this particular scenario, we went ahead to save it in our local storage. So guys, let's go ahead and extend our app data so that we can be able to access full name, email, and phone number anytime we want. Okay, so I'm gonna go to app data. So I'm gonna define a new method that will get our full name right. Public static string get full name. So what we want to do here is to retrieve our full name from our local storage. All right. So for us to be able to do that, we need an instance of I shared preferences. Okay. So we're gonna go back to our user provider by listener. We're gonna copy this. This is exactly what we need. Okay, go to our app data. So we need to make the instance global so that it can always be accessible within this class. All right. So we got some error here. We need to add static to this. Static. So we need to make this static. So now we can now say string full name will be equal to pref preferences dot get string so remember what we said initially as the key it was full name so we're gonna pass it our key full name and in case we didn't find any value we're gonna put a default value okay so now we have this we're gonna say return full name boom so that's that. We're going to do the same for our email address. Static string. Get email, right? Copy this. Change this to email. Email. Email, right? So the last one. Public static string get phone. All right. So I'm going to copy this as well and paste it here. I'm going to change this to phone. All right. So, guys, now we are done here. Everything is just the way we want it to be. We've now made our phone number, email address, and full name to be part of our app data so that we can access it from anywhere within our application. So guys, that's all for this class. Hope you really enjoyed it. So see you in the next class.